Hi. Um, I would like to just speak to someone, file a complaint, or get clarification on an encounter I had with a police officer today. Okay. All right. I never thought I'd cry on Instagram, but I wanted to share it like a share it scary experience. I'm still shaking like 30 minutes later, actually like 35, 40 now. Um, I'm on my break and I hear banging, not knocks, banging on my driver's side door and my front door. So I go out and it's the police and they ask me to step out of my vehicle. So I do. Um, they basically tell me in the city, I'm not allowed to sleep overnight. Um, and so I tell them like, sorry, I didn't know. Like I've only slept here like three times in the past week and a half. I haven't been here for five days. And I said, um, but I'm a teacher. Like I have one more class session. Then I have a lunch break. I will move on my lunch break. And, um, as we're talking, they have three other cops approaching. And so it's basically me in front of my front door, a cop, a cop, and three others. So they have like a half circle kind of around me. And so I asked them, they say, um, can I ask why you guys have five police officers? And they were like, well, we call for backup in certain situations. And I said, well, I'm not quite sure why you need backup in this situation, but it's making me feel very uncomfortable having this many officers. So they tell the others to back up, but they're just kind of hanging around. And so they ask me questions for like seven or eight minutes and they're not like nice questions. Like, how was your day? Like they're interrogative questions about like my plans, what I'm doing, like all this type of stuff. And so basically at the end, the male cop was like, um, well, I'll give you a phone number for if you need financial assistance or a warm place to sleep. And I said, I don't need that. I said, I just told you I have a full-time job. I said, I do this for fun, not because I have to. And he was like, well, I'll just give it to you because, you know, some people really might need it. And um, you never know. And I said, well, I don't. But he still insists on writing the phone number down and giving it to me. And so at the end of this, I literally, I'm annoyed and I'm emotionally, like, upset. My eyes have been watering this whole time. I've been holding it together. Um... And I say, um, can I ask you a question? I said, are you gonna talk to the other rigs here? Because there's three vans. There's a van like with a, a trailer and a small RV that like fits in a parking spot. And he was like, well, we'll decide that later. <laughs> so after I come back in the bus, I look out my window, I'm crying and I'm having an emotional mental breakdown, hugging on Joe, but I look out my window, they get in their car and they just drive away. They don't talk to any other rigs here, just mine. So I'm upset, I call my mom. My mom um, is clearly upset. <laughs> I'm clearly upset. I think anyone that has cops surrounding them would feel very uncomfortable, especially being a person of color. It made me feel very uncomfortable. So my mom wants me and told me, and I think I will go to the police office, police station and file a complaint um, just with how they handled that situation and making me feel very uncomfortable and the fact that they profiled just me and did not talk to anyone else that was clearly here. And the cop also tried to tell me that I've been here multiple nights over the past two weeks. He's seen me multiple times. I've literally, I haven't been here in five days. My family was here. I was hanging out completely on the other side of town, like 35, 40 minutes away. So that was a lie. Um, but yeah, so I never thought I would cry on Instagram, but I just wanted to share my experience. I feel like I'm very vulnerable with you guys, and I want to share, like, the good, the bad of every experience in bus life. So, hopefully the rest of my day is better than this, um, and I hope everyone else has a good rest of your day. <laughs> Bye! I just wanted to show you guys the other cars that are here. There's an RV, or a van. A van clearly still sleeping with their front cover shade. Another van with their front cover shades on. And another camper that literally says camping on their trailer. <laughs> so, yeah. And then around this brown thing right here, there's um, a little half RV thing that fits in a small space or whatever. But they decided to only talk and surround me. Wonder why. Why does the bus get profiled? I don't understand. Because, like, also, does my bus look janky? I don't think so. Like, I feel like it looks, like, nice on the outside. It doesn't look like a broken down person. Like, I, I literally have my social media on it. I have a 
What gets me is I have a freaking AC unit on the back. Like, that thing's a thousand dollars, my unit. Like, <laughs> whatever. <sighs> so, I still have teaching to do in 45 minutes, and then I have an hour of teaching. I don't want to be rushed. I'm going to the police station. I'm going to file a complaint. Um for them making me feel uncomfortable. I get like emotional just even saying that I felt uncomfortable. Um, and the fact that they didn't question anyone else when people are clearly sleeping in their vehicles. So, yeah. So my day's just a little delayed <laughs> for what I had planned to do today, but um, yeah. Hey guys, I'm at the police station. I'm actually very nervous about it. Police make me very nervous, especially after this situation. Um, and it could be easy for them to just kind of like dismiss like my side of it and how it made me feel. So we'll see how it goes. I'm not, I'm gonna bring my camera in. I'm gonna record like just audio. I'm not gonna record video, but I will record audio of conversations if I can. Um, but yeah, so here we go. We're here. I'm already like feeling my throat clog up, so let's do this. I'm also wondering why they didn't talk to anyone else because you also informed me that I could be arrested for sleeping in your county. But if it's that serious that I could be arrested right now in this moment, why are you also not talking to? the three other vans who clearly have front covers that they're sleeping in there, the RV on the other side of the Cracker Barrel lot, and the guy pulling a trailer that literally says camper on it, and I was the only one that was singled out and discussed and had backup called on them. So I'm just, I don't sure, appreciate I, I, how it was handled. I don't appreciate the way that he spoke to me. Um, the lady talked to she informed me she was in training. She was very nice. She was like, oh, that's so cool. You get to travel and work from home. And she was very personable, but he was very just dismissive, judgmental, and made me feel less than and very uncomfortable. And I just want clarification. So I, I certainly understand your concerns. And I'm glad that you came in today um, to talk about it. So I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and I hope anybody else would as well. Um, I'm sorry you. Um, you felt the way that you did out there. I can understand that completely. The reason that officer isn't trained, the, the female officer isn't trained. Um, and so anytime we go out with anybody we don't know, um, we're automatically, our policy is gonna start a backup unit to go there. The other unit that showed up was also a training officer. So they're gonna have the trainee and then an officer that's training that officer. So that's why there were more officers. So our urban camping is between 2200 well, I'm sorry, 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. So that's the city code that we reference. And part of this statute requires us that if somebody is urban camping, we have to offer them resources. So that's that's the reason he would have offered you those resources. Whether or not uh, you actually need them or not, um, I, I, Even I imagine. Even when I say no three times, though, and you still make it, it makes me feel belittled like you're imposing sure. your judgment Sure, no, I understand. Now, as far as contact with the other vehicles. So I know, because I had talked to him before um, to kind of get um, like what, why why the, the why you were um, talked to over there. Um, and at that time he told me your vehicle was the only one that was taking up four spots there. There's um, parts laterally in the back of the lot. It's just a no mask and you don't want to park next to somebody else and be sure. in their space. So I didn't park in the lateral spots because there was a van in a travel trailer and I would have been sandwiched right in between the two of them. To okay. give them space, I parked along the back. The furthest back, there's nobody else back there. The goal is to uh, make sure we educate people, right? And then we want it in, in nine times out of 10, we want to make sure we give people that education, give them that warning. And that's fine. Yeah. I, I welcome if anyone ever wants to tell me if I'm doing something and you, <laughs> you, you seem very reasonable. There's a way to go about things. You, you seem totally, totally understanding of all of that. So Maybe I'm just a teacher, so I'm a little more sensitive to when I, people I, should go around I, about things and see people. But for sure. Um, and I, like I said, I'm I'm sorry that that's the experience you had. I can tell you right now, we don't want anybody to feel belittled or to feel like they're uh, just on or. Uh, Single out or anything like that. It, it, 
some, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll check with him and find out um, if there's anything else. And hopefully we can take this experience and have better approaches in the future. Um, you, we, okay, let me give you my card. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to, the easiest way to get a hold of me is uh, the email address on there. All right, y'all. I just talked to the sergeant. Um, it didn't really help me, but, you know, it is what it is. So, <sighs> gonna go on about my day and uh, hopefully have a better one. Good morning, y'all. Well, actually, it's, is it the afternoon? No, it's still the morning. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Today is going to be a much better day. Um, yes, or last night I did not really sleep that well. I kind of woke up every single time a car drove by. I'm not in the same county that I was in, so I'm fine, but still, it's just nerve-wracking, you know? Um, so, it's 11 o'clock right now. Um, I still have to work check my email, do some paperwork stuff for like the next hour. So I'm just going to hang out um, in this parking lot. I'm actually in Burn Boot Camp parking lot because I woke up super early and went to uh, camp really early this morning at like 5.30. Um, so I am going to finish working from here and then we've got some stuff to do today, y'all. I've got to go to a Planet Fitness. I want to do some cardio because this morning was just arms, so I want to get like a sweat going. Um, I'm going to shower. Then I decided to turn lemons into lemonade. Uh, yesterday, the police officer insisted I needed um, a place to stay, a warm meal, financial assistance from a homeless shelter here in Phoenix. So since he insisted that I need their help, I decided I'm going to go volunteer my time today and um, give them some help. Since I don't need their assistance, um, I'm going to go volunteer my time at a woman's and children's homeless shelter in downtown Phoenix during the dinner service. So we've got that from 3 to 5.30. So I've got to kind of move through the things I need to do today, but I'm kind of stuck for another hour at least. So I'll have three hours to get downtown um, when I can leave here. So that's what we're doing today. I'm really excited to give back my time. I haven't volunteered in a while and something that I used to do that I enjoy doing. Um, being a college athlete, we always did volunteer hours and stuff and I really love giving back to people in need so I'm excited to do this and I'm just taking that situation as kind of like my push to get back into community service um so yeah we'll do that I'll film what I can you, um I had to sign a waiver I can't film like the clients there or anything but I can film myself so hopefully I'll do some of that and take you guys along so I'm excited about that but uh I'll come back to you guys uh, a little bit later so see you then I just want to wrap up this video by saying a few things. First and foremost, I did not create this video to cause a drama or anything. I created this video to truly share my experiences on bus life. I want to share the good, the bad, the ugly, the scary, everything. And so that's why I created this video. Secondly, um, I just want to say thank you to the sergeant, actually. Um, I'm very proud of myself for going to the station after having an experience where you could feel tra traumatized a little bit and emotionally distraught um, going to a police station to share your experience isn't necessarily the easiest thing to do but the sergeant sat with me for 30 minutes he talked to me he listened to me he even asked me more questions about how they could 
do better, you know? He asked if when they banged on my window, did they announce themselves? And I said no, and so he was like, that's another thing I can talk to them about. So he was very open-minded um, to my experience, and yeah. And my experience, you know, wasn't the worst experience in the world. There are way worse interactions with officers where people can even end up dead. And so I'm not saying mine is like, woe is me, the worst situation in the world, but there were things that I felt could have been done differently. And so by going to the station and speaking to the sergeant, I was able to express my concerns and he was able to take that and review the body cam footage. Now, do I know if he did anything with our conversation? I have no clue, but at least I can feel like I did my part to make interactions like this go a little bit better. And you know what? Maybe I learned something too. Like he said, the goal is to educate um, people. Will I ever know why he actually singled me out besides parking laterally? I don't know. But can I take this situation and learn from it? And maybe when I'm parking in cities, look up the city codes to see if they have camping laws. Yes, I can 100% do that and do my part to help avoid these interactions going forward. Thirdly, I, in addition to speaking to the sergeant and kind of taking my power back, I am just so happy that I turned this negative interaction into a positive by being able to give my time back. I'm not saying, like, look at me, I am a superstar person because I volunteered my time. Um, I'm only sharing that part of it just to remind people not to place judgments onto others and to truly be kind. Um, I felt like the officer was judging me because the way that I choose my, to live my life. And maybe, you know, he doesn't necessarily know bus life or understand why someone would choose to live in a bus and he could associate that to homelessness. Um, but also when I was at the shelter, I was reminded that people don't end up in shelters or on the streets because they choose to. There are so many reasons why people end up there. You know, speaking to the women, some of them were there for addiction. Some of them were there for abuse. Some of them were there because the person they relied on financially was no longer in the picture and left them not in a place where they could financially support themselves. There's so many reasons why people end up in certain situations or just choose to live the lives that they want in the way that they want, if that makes sense. So I just wanted to kind of wrap up this video by the point of this was just to lead with kindness and to not place judgments on others and to be open-minded. <laughs> and that's really it. Um, so if you made it this far, Thank you for watching this video. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a subs give me a subscribe, a subscribe, a subscription. I don't know. <laughs> um, hit that button if you want. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys back here for the next video. And I hope everyone has a great week. Until then. Bye guys.